I was supposed to do this so long ago where I asked um, you guys to ask me anything related to med school, BSc, getting in. What's up you guys? My name is Amanda Mjali, also known as Amanda Mimi on the socials. I am from Pretoria, however I was born in a small town called Alice in the Eastern Cape and I'm a second year medical student at the University of the Free State. And this is the life of a second year medical student at UFS. So, Selu kindly sent me all the questions and I was so happy and so excited to do this video. Um, so, if you guys see me looking down, I am looking at the questions. They are on my phone. And yeah, I hope you guys really enjoy this video. And don't forget to comment on Selu's channel, subscribe and like. Um, I'm really loving all the med school journeys and the content. It's really keeping us motivated and going. So without further ado, let's do this. Okay, so the first question is, which high school you went to? So I went to the Glen High School in Pretoria. Okay, so I went to other high schools, but that was the high school that I matriculated in. So it is the Glen High. The next question is your matric marks or levels for APS. So the girl, yo guys, I matriculated so long ago. Um, I don't even remember. What are the highest levels? Okay, okay, yes, I've got it here. So the highest level I think is a seven. So I got five sevens and two sixes. So most of my marks were in the 80s and the 90s, and then I got two 74s, and that is how I did in matric. And yeah. That was my trick <laughs> and if the lighting changes guys i am filming at the mercy of the sun and yeah but i hope it doesn't change too much and i hope it's not too distracting for you guys then the next question is how did you prepare for the nbt so this girl here i don't think i've written an nbt no <laughs> I don't think I've written the NBT or maybe I'm lying the first time I did my BSc I don't remember if we had to do the NBT but in the past five years or so I haven't written the NBT even before getting into UFS if you do have a qualification and then you are not required to write the NBT so I don't even want to lie to you guys I don't know and then how did you get into medicine BSc route um, approximate Oh, a pro English approximate your matric marks and degree average okay so I got through medicine via the BSc route in matric the girl did not apply for medicine I don't know what I was thinking but I realized um, down the line that I actually want to be a doctor so I did a BSc at the University of Pretoria first two years didn't go well was failing um, some of my modules and my marks weren't too great so the average for my first degree was not good it was around the 60s um, but like low 60s and then uh, my average for matric however was very good but I did an honors after that and my honors marks um, happened to be good by the grace of God so I did graduate my honors cum laude so I managed to get a distinction for that next question is how are you funding your fees at the moment? So um, God has been so good and I do have a bursary. I am currently um, utilizing a bursary that was recommended by the finance department from my school. And my first year experience of medical student lifestyle. So I think it was a bit different for me because I wasn't like a fresh out matric student who has never been to university so for me it was actually chilled it was like a normal school year um, I have been used to university sort of lifestyle I have this is my third university I went to the University of Pretoria to Sefako Mahato and now I'm at UFS so it really was okay but if I can make it specific to UFS it was really really chilled it was nice Bloemfontein is a much smaller town and then Pretoria what I'm used to. Yeah, I really enjoyed it <laughs> um, The next question is which modules are done in first year 
credits given if you have a BSc. So in my school, we do not credit any other degrees from other schools because the program is different from all the other schools and it is a five-year medical program. So most schools have a six-year medical program, undergraduate program, and then obviously there's the GMP at VITS, which is shorter, but this um, program does not credit you. However, you do do your first year, like in the first six months of the year, and then you have your basic modules like what are they um histology a little bit of physiology some introduction to anatomy you have medical physics um you don't have chemistry like the other schools so i know um the other schools as well as tux um when i was doing my bsc you do literally the first six months of what the medical students do you do like proper chemistry proper physics all those things so you don't have that at ufs but you do have medical physics and yeah an integration of of those kind of modules and yeah i think that's it for first year and then in the second semester you basically start your second year or your second phase of the degree and you start with your um, basic sciences full-on anatomy full-on physiology um, you eventually start with microbiology and the likes the next question, um, which module is the worst and how can one prepare for this module? So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I really have a module that's the worst, but I can say that a, a module that is sort of a nuisance for me um, was microbiology. Um, mainly because of the amount of content, the amount of names that you have to learn, the different bacteria, the viruses, the pathogenesis. And I think what you can do to really try and maximize and do well in micro is to really take it day by day. So don't play yourself and do the whole day before, two days before the exam, child. <laughs> it's not gonna work out. So try be consistent, maybe after your lecture, prepare before the lecture, that's what I usually did. Just read through the slides casually, go to the lecture, you'll hear it again, then you've got that reinforcement. And then when you get home again, try go through the lecture casually. It doesn't have to be any intense studying, but the more you see it, the more you see the words, the more you see um, the pathogenesis or the type of uh, bacteria it is the better it becomes and you remembering it instead of leaving it for like the day before where you've got all this micro that you must just learn because now you're gonna think this pathogenesis ish what was the organism again and you're just gonna have it all mixed up so yeah then the next question is how is varsity life as a medical student in comparison to a science student or your degree okay so for me um varsity life is really not different if i can put it that way the only difference is that i am a non-traditional medical student and i am much older so i'm also married <laughs> so my life is not student doof doof um kind of life of course i do go out with some friends and try relax outside of school but life is normal for me um i study i spend time with my husband with my family and with my friends so yeah then the next question is what keeps you going when the road gets tough so for me, it's my faith. I am a Christian and honestly, that's what keeps me going. Um, the promises of God, the word of God, that really is what gets me through as well as the support of the people in my life, especially my husband. He is so supportive of um, everything that I do. So he really helps. When I have to study, he will be the one who makes the food. <laughs> so yeah. So how would you describe uh, the current year in comparison to your previous year of medical school advice on how to prepare for these years okay so i am currently in my second year but the fourth semester in my school we sort of separate the years into semesters so fourth semester is pretty okay it's pretty chilled um as compared to first year first year first six months was quite a lot a lot of modules a lot of content heavy modules and my advice would be um just try keep up like med school the content is a lot 
we know it's a lot but try your best to keep up even if you fall behind by a session or two but don't leave everything for last minute because that's what gets overwhelming and that's what triggers anxiety and stress and all these things and i mean of course you will have anxiety and stress um but to minimize that and just to help you function optimally in medical school try to keep up and then finally advice to future and current medical students so my advice would be to work hard stay humble never think that oh i'm so smart i deserve to get into medical school because life can be very humbling and even if you come into medical school and you are smart life can humble you and you can find yourself literally scraping through i remember in my first degree i really struggled and it wasn't because i didn't do well in a matric so stay humble work hard and do the best that you can and if this really is truly a passion for you if you're not yet studying medicine hang in there do your best trust in the will of the lord and yeah but thank you guys so much i hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to comment like subscribe bye bye our greatest glory is never in falling but in rising every time we fall if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like these. Thank you to the new subscribers, very much appreciated.